How long has been Allotropia involved in the LibreOffice project? So Allotropia is a very young company. We're, we're barely a year old. Um, and we're a, a spin-off from, from CIB. Um, so we've been essentially taking the uh, LibreOffice uh, open source team from CIB, spun it out into a separate company. So in a way, uh, we're active uh, since January 1st um, and contributing towards LibreOffice. Um, in effect, in reality, it's the same team that has been working with me um, at CIB uh, for by now more than six years. So um, that's been, if you will, that's been the time we've been contributing. Strictly speaking, it's since January 1st. Which are Allotropia main objectives for sponsoring the LibreOffice conference? Thanks for asking. Um, so, there's, so there are two main objectives. First and foremost, we'd like to um, give back a bit to the community. Um, it's a way to, to help uh, TDF towards running a successful conference. Um, as we all know, that involves lots of things. Um, lots of work, but also um, there's a need for money to pay for, for for things. So we're quite quite grateful to be able to contribute a little bit towards that. The second objective, um, obviously, since Allotropia is a very young company, we're a startup um, and um, perhaps not as well known um, as other uh, uh, commercial providers of LibreOffice services and products. So we'd like to get to know, have the community get to know us a bit better uh, and that's a very nice way as a conference sponsor um, um, to put our name um, in front of people. According to analysts, the office suite market segment will grow at a yearly rate of 5% during the next five years to reach a global value of $30 billion. Where do you see LibreOffice in this scenario? So um, the hope is, of course, that we, we will be able to grow um, with that market. Um, personally, um, I'm convinced that we will grow even faster. Um, one of the reasons why, um, why, why I set up this company is that I'm convinced that um, there will be um, a step change uh, in um, how LibreOffice and LibreOffice uptake and also LibreOffice technology uptake. You see that um, um, across the globe, there is increasing awareness that um, with the um, with the pervasiveness of digital processes and workflows, how important it is um, to be in control of your own destiny and being able um, to drive your IT agenda rather being driven um, by large vendors. And I think open source. Uh, and especially open source and such a, such a critical uh, piece of software like Office Productivity is regarded as uh, strategically important um, from a num number of people, including governments and large corporations. Uh, so the hope is that with um, LibreOffice um, um, being able to, to drive lots of things, being able to, to run even in the background with the LibreOffice technology, um, processes um, that you don't even see. The hope is that um, we will grow uh, and um, be much more pervasive than we are now. Uh, so, um, and, and there's, so that, that's across the, uh, across the industry and, and, and the fact that open source is slowly growing from um, rather low levels like operating systems but now increasingly also into user space areas, um, user facing software uh, makes me very, very, very optimistic that it will happen. Since the launch of the LibreOffice project, the end of desktop productivity has been predicted several times, but the application are still alive. Which is your opinion on the future of this market segment? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, and uh, as always, the, um, those that are uh, proclaimed death, uh, that they, they, they tend to live um, a long and healthy life. Um, so, so there's two aspects to, to that question. First of all, um, I, I do believe that um, desktop office productivity um, has a future, just, just um, so many uh, desktop, soft, desktop computers out there. Um, there are so many processes still um, um, designed around um, desktop office um, um, 
solutions. Um, the, the other side of, of, um, of the coin is the fact that it doesn't really, for, for LibreOffice as a project, doesn't really matter so much because the, the way that LibreOffice is able to adapt, the way that LibreOffice can be ported uh, and converted into pretty much any solution out there. So LibreOffice has been ported to, to, to every major platform uh, architecture and operating system out there. Um, has been uh, adopted uh, as a um, um, back office solution, as a driving technology with its LibreOffice technology moniker. Um, so, so even if uh, desktop office um, would be in steep decline, LibreOffice would still be relevant uh, because of the way uh, it can be used and adapted and ported. Um, on the other hand, if, um, as I would expect, LibreOffice uh, on the desktop would be in decline, but not in steep decline, you would still have the flexibility to run that there for many years. Um, and if you take this all together, the, the one unique um, uh, aspect, the, the one unique property of LibreOffice, by the way um, it works, is that it's essentially the same code code that runs, like regardless of where you are, whether that's on the desktop, whether that's in a browser, whether that's on a mobile um, device, it's the same code that renders, that loads and renders your document. So you won't have any, any issues with uh, diverging rendering with incompatibilities. So I think the question whether desktop is, is in decline or not, um, and what the future brings, uh, we from the LibreOffice project and, and people um, um, working in that ecosystem can be pretty relaxed because we know that pretty much everything that the future will bring, even those that we don't even know about, the innovations five years down the road, we will very likely be able to adapt. During the last 18 months with the pandemic, open source software and LibreOffice have helped people working from home and this has increased the global number of users. Do you see this as a trend? Uh, yes, absolutely. I think that um, that ties in with the um, what I what I said earlier that um, the 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 fact that that LibreOffice is so flexible and it's um, available everywhere um, uh, most of the time as, at, at a very low or zero cost. Um, um, that that is a trend that will continue. I think the pandemic essentially has just accelerated something that was um, there before. Just just it was just a fast forward, like catching up with five years, ten years of um, 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 held back development. Um, and with people um, running very many different computing devices, um, having like needing in, in need of more. Uh, computers while while they are at home or whether on on the road or whether they sit in the office, um, the, the need to have the same um, pretty much the same software available everywhere um, uh, that renders the same document in the same way. Um, that's a very important aspect that LibreOffice can provide. Uh, and I think that need was there, but it has only been accelerated. And I do expect it to continue. Um, um, and grow even more pervasive. Which are the three best characteristics of LibreOffice that make the software stand out against the competition? Yeah, so I think that there's three, um, indeed three um, aspects that that are essential in, in, in my mind. First of all, as I, as I said, the, the fact that LibreOffice is, is very, very flexible. So, so the code has been ported um, to every major uh, platform, to every major architecture out there. Um, by now, it's 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 very easy to port. It's not trivial, but it's it's easy compared to other um, to other software. It's kind of in the DNA um, of the project to be adaptable and to be portable. Um, that's um, that really helps because the future will only see more platforms. Uh, and 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 more architectures um, and less uniform um, less uniformity in computing, uh, and that's that's very 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 important to be future proof. Um, and um, 
that's really at the core. That's the, really the DNA of the project. The, the second um, aspect is the fact that um, LibreOffice with uh, the open document format has a standardized um, file format that was actually the very first um, XML-based um, uh, um, office productivity format that was that was fully standardized. It's an open standardization process, so it's it's pretty much open to everyone. And LibreOffice is driving that. Um, so so we're kind of in control in a way of our own destiny. But we're not we're not required to follow uh, others um, that dictate what we can or what we cannot put in, into our document format. Um, and I think that will also be increasingly important um, uh, uh, as, a, as an aspect of, of that project um, where we can shine. And the third, um, uh, I think, very important um, attribute of LibreOffice is the fact that not only it's an open source project, but it's a multi-vendor and community-driven open source project, uh, which is not a given. So um, you, you find open source software that is essentially if you need um, um, if you need to talk business to someone, it's essentially just one company. For LibreOffice, it's different. There's a multitude of companies. Uh, there's quite a large number of um, um, unaffiliated LibreOffice developers um, that will be available uh, for hire if you need to do something. And it's a community-driven project, so the community is essentially in control um, of the project, and it's not a single company. And all of that makes it a very um, um, future-proof project uh, and, and something that... Um, um, if you want independence and flexibility, you're probably very, very well served uh, to choose. Thank you, and uh, see you soon at the LibreOffice conference.